All right, we're going to talk about sports role and positive socialization. Our learning, learning objectives, this is going to be what we get out of the book and with this uh, short presentation, are going to be boiled down to five basic things. First, we, would, we want to identify the common design elements in sport programs. We want, we want to be able to link those design elements to the stated program goals and outcomes. The second one is define and describe the positive and negative as aspects and outcomes from sport and sport participation. Third, we want to understand that all sport programs are not the same design, delivery, and outcome. They are different, and they have different outcomes, designs, and delivery. Then we want to talk about and distinguish between the goals and outcomes of various sport programs. So is it recreation versus serious participation, social versus competitive, and so forth. And finally, we want to understand the role of the sport manager in promoting socialization through the design and the management of the sport or activity. Now, let's look at some of the things that people have long said were positive aspects of participation and of sport. So we have the muscular Christianity influential in promoting the sport for good. So we think about like the ideal um, person through that certain religion, and they're going to promote sport as a way to go about that. We think about sport as bringing peace and harmony to the world. It's something that brings people together in a lot of different ways. And, you know, claims for sport as positive force uh, aren't necessarily, um, not everybody uh, buys into that idea. So then we can look at, like, um, some, some other benefits as far as the uh, socialization aspect, right? We've got physical fitness. Um, we got skill development, we talk about motor skills and stuff like that, character development, um, appreciation for societal norms, those will be reinforced. We think about life skills, uh, which um, through the different aspects of sport can, we can learn that. Academic achievement, so especially in uh, public schools where students have to have a certain academic achievement in order to participate in sports. Uh, decision making skills, so on and off the field, those are reinforced. Um, but they learn those, uh, some of those decision-making skills while participating in the sport, whether that's practice or, you know, any competition. We can talk about, you know, overall, we talked about personal character development. We can think about character development in a lot of different ways as well. So, uh, you know, when we look at research overall for sport and socialization and stuff like that, um, we're going to talk about a couple of key aspects. It's not that sport cannot provide all these benefits that have traditionally been touted. It's that they, they are not uniformly and automatically instilled. And we can see that a lot with a lot of new developments in sport. Like um, I remember not too long ago, there was a football player in Texas that um, got super aggressive toward a referee, right? And this referee is out there doing, doing his job and trying to do his best. And, you know, this high school child, <clears throat> and I say child in, in, in a way that, person is still developing, right? Um, this high school, let's, let's say student, this high school student um, got very aggressive and, you know, that's not something, that's obviously not something that's taught in a sport as a positive attribute or a positive aspect. Um, sport settings and programs vary considerably in the ways they provide the sport, talk about the sport, teach the sport, coach the individuals, right? So what we need to really do is dig down deep and say, um, what What's, what does sport provide as far as these benefits and how can these other benefits that we typically look at sport for, how can we get those elsewhere or how can we make sure that they're still within the sport itself? Um, so let's shift a little bit to a sense of community. And I think that's a big part of sport socialization and sport in general, right, is you have to camaraderie the community. Um, I know when I was... Uh, involved in sports it's you know you have that, that team mentality that you're all in it together i know that's a saying that we've heard a lot recently but that sense of community is often linked to sport so let's think about what conditions uh promote that sense of community right so you know we're thinking about a lot of time spent together uh struggling to overcome some issues or problems so you can think about that as i have a personal thing that i'm not able to get a task or a drill or, you know, something or a play right, and I have to keep on working at it, and my teammates keep on helping me work at it, and they go over and over and over again. So not only am I working on a problem, my team is helping me work on that problem as well. And then you can look at your contribution to a larger issue, you know, 
as a team when you accomplish a certain goal. I want a piece of that. If my piece doesn't work, that's bad. But I also have to make sure my piece works and I help somebody else work as well. So, you know, we develop a lot of these things and we spend a lot of time together. We accomplish goals, we, we, we accept defeat, all this other stuff. Um, you know, what does that, what does that sense of community do for people involved in that? Whether it's in sport or out, you know, it gives them a sense of purpose, um, a sense of obligation and some other stuff. And that, that's what we really have to think about in the long term is, you know, what does that do for the people, you know, what does that do for the person or the people involved? And how do we design sports so that more people experience that kind of benefit, the positive aspects of that, right? How can we design those experiences to make sure that we have that sense of community, the community building and the, you know, the sense of uh, shared uh, participation and shared gratification when we achieve the goal. So let's think about this in a couple different ways, right? Indiv individual versus team sports. And when I think of individual sports, I'm thinking of things like um, the 400 meter um, sprint. While you're maybe a part of a team, the, the success of the event is on one person you while you're running the event uh, versus team sports which i think i like uh basketball uh, so here you know uh well, let's go let's go with bowling and basketball because i use that here a little bit but when you think about bowling like you know one person that's you know rolling the ball down the lane achieving their goal or not so what kind of sense of community and outcomes can we get from that um you know we can develop those you know those um those norms. So within and out of sport, like professionalism, um, you know, the, the ability to have your character craft in a way that you can be gracious uh, in, uh, you know, defeat and gracious when you are victorious. Uh, and the same goes, you know, it, it, but how does that happen? You know, when who shares those feelings with you when you're done, whether you've defeated somebody or been defeated in your uh, match or your you know your game or whatnot, and that's how we really have to think about it. I believe if we look at like basketball, right? You, whether you win or lose, you've got this team around you that have a, that has a shared experience, and you know you just have a better idea of what it means to everybody when you have that. Your your feelings and your emotions. And all that are like uh, validated because you're sharing that experience. It, you know, not everybody has to react the same way, but you know, if you get defeated uh, in a game, you're kind of down about it, right? You're like, oh man, I wish, you know, wish I could have been better, or I wish the team could have been better. And most likely, other people on the team are sharing those feelings in some capacity. So there's, you know, that kind of aspect. And then we can also look at it from like co-ed versus single gender sports. When I think about co-ed sports myself, I think about uh, playing co-ed volleyball in college for intramural sports, right? And how the socialization there is different than when I played sand volleyball on a guy's team uh, at the same time. Um, you know, you think about what development came out of that, whether that was, you know, the positive aspects of that. Um, and it was just different, very different. You know, the, the, the co-ed, we were obviously playing to win, um, but the co-rec was a little bit more about the socialization and the fun than the sand volleyball was. Um, and, and, you know, there's certain outcomes you expect from each situation and certain ways you react to the uh, participation and the outcome to that. And I think the other part is that, you know, looking at that uh, competitive versus recreation for fun, um, you know, when, you, when, you're, when you're hyper competitive, I'd like to say hyper competitive, you know, the, the way you go about playing the game and the outcomes you expect is much different. Uh, a good example of that is I, I used to love to play softball when I was younger, and I was not good at it. Uh, you know, I, I'm not going to say I'm terrible at it, but it was, there, was no, there was no way that I was going to be a, a hyper-competitive athlete. I just enjoyed out there playing, being on the field, and all that kind of stuff. And, and I knew that at the end of the day, if I won, I was going to be happy. But it you know, wasn't going to be a big change in my life. And if I lost, I was going to be disappointed. But again, it wasn't going to be a big change in my life. After that was said and done, we'd all go down to the local bar there in the town and have a beer and have a burger. And that was it. That was, that was all it was to it, right? 
um, <coughs> excuse me, versus being competitive. I remember being on a uh, basketball team also in college and intramurals, and um, we were really good. Um, and, and that's not to say I was by far you know great, but our team was really good, and we we expected to win. Uh, I mean, we expected everybody to play hard to reach that point and minimize mistakes. And the, the few times we lost um, and people made a mistake, you were super disappointed in that person. But you had to also remember that this person is also the reason you're part of success. And they may have had one bad game or made one mistake, but you had to you had to put that in a bigger context, right? And then we can look at youth versus adult sports. Excuse me, youth versus adult sports is also something to consider in a lot of different ways is how do we teach youth how to uh, interact with others during, before, during, and after the uh, sport. Okay, so we've talked about some of the positive aspects. Let's, let's look at some of the bad things, right? Um, especially now with a lot of helicopter and lawnmower parenting, uh, those are terms I've heard a lot. There's an overemphasis on winning. <laughs> And I really think that, you know, winning isn't everything, right? Everybody enjoys winning and enjoy, you know, having that kind of that moment. But the emphasis for youth sports, especially, shouldn't be should be more about skill development. You know, especially now that I'm older, I think about um, I have no idea how many games I won in little league baseball or little, little league football. Um, I vaguely recall what we won as far as high school sports, right? Um, so I don't remember the winning or the losing. Uh, I do remember some specific events and times and other things that occurred uh, kind of ancillary to that sport endeavor, right? Um, you know, I remember going, I remember one time uh, my friend's parents took us to Dairy Queen to get an ice cream after a game. I don't remember if we lost or won, you know, so I don't know if it was a, hey, we won, let's get ice cream, or hey, I'm sorry, we lost, let's get ice cream, right? Um, I remember the ice cream. So I think that's the, there's an overemphasis on winning when there needs to be an emphasis on the other things. Um, cheating, um, you know, and this is something that's come about with, and I always think about are referees good or bad? So really what I think, in some cases, referees almost encourage cheating, right? So the, 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 things, the things I enjoy the most is pick up basketball when you're calling your own fouls. And um, for years, uh, we've done this, right? We have an old man league. Um, at my previous place of employment, we had an old man league and we played basketball. And when you fouled somebody, you called it, you called your own fouls. And that's the way it was. Defense calls fouls. And what that ended up doing is you tried hard. You didn't try hard. You tried not to, to cheat or, you know, do that kind of thing. You try to play by the rules, right? And everybody was accountable to everybody, but really you just you made it an emphasis that you weren't going to cheat. And now with referees and umpires and all that, it's almost like how much can I get away with before they'll blow the whistle or pull the card or throw the flag? I think that's a problem. Um, drug use. So, you know, this is something that I think really came about um, a long time ago. There's always been a ways to enhance um, performance. And you know, we think about technology as one aspect of that and then drug use uh, being another part of that. And then, you know, when I was younger, it was a Mark McGuire, Sammy Sosa home run race that really brought this to light. You know, and you're looking at guys that, um, you know, and the same thing with um, old Barry Bonds. Looking at these guys that hit these crazy amount of home runs, uh, all based on, um, you know, performance enhancing drugs. And I think that, you know, while health and wellness uh, and all that, the technology and information related to that is still changing, you know, some of these drugs um, and these um, supplements, if you will, have really taken a, a new uh, place in the society of sport. I think there's still a lot yet to come. In general, if you have to take, my, my stance is if you have to take drugs to be uh, performing competitively, then I'm not so sure you should be in that realm. Um, you know, and not everybody deserves to be a competitive professional athletes. Some of us are just regular old have fun athletes. Um, gender roles, and I think this is changing a lot too, but you know, it's, it's something that's still um, politically moving. Uh, it's a moving target politically and all that. It's gender roles. Um, so, you know, I think there's, there's a lot going on here within and 
ancillary to the sport. What I mean by that is, um, I remember when I was young, and uh, I remember when they started first started letting girls play uh, t-ball with boys, and it was a big deal. Uh, and now looking back, I'm like, who the heck cares, right? Um, just the other day, I read a headline about a football team hiring their first uh, lady coach uh, full time, I believe. Um, and, you know, and these things are just like, well, okay, as long as she's doing the job, who gives that flip, right? But for a long time, that was it was very you know rigid roles that you know only men could hold those positions, um, and it was just kind of funny because if you look at the tradition of female basketball, for example. Um, there's been a lot of male coaches, so it doesn't always hold true for the other side. Um, psychological harm, we look at a lot of things that come in and out of um, sport with um, you know how we interact with it mentally. And there can be some negative things come out of that. We teach uh, some you know certain ways about going about uh, the sport, which can translate over into real life. Uh, and psychologically, that is great. Um, and, and I don't know any information because I, I hear a lot about how some sports make people aggressive and then you see people getting in trouble for domestic abuse and stuff like that. And so I don't specifically know what the rate is of folks that are involved in competitive sports versus not for domestic violence. But you know, overall, it's bad. And if it can be or is attributed to some of this, then you know, we need to find other ways to go about getting the performance within the sport while not getting into that psychological aspect of it. Um, and that can go into that verbal abuse and emotional harm as well. So uh, let's think about, you know, your, your reasons and your motivations, right? Um, overall. Uh, so when we think about, you know, the motivations for involvement, why do people play sports? Um, and I, I'm not, there's no right or wrong answer here per se, but I think there's some commonalities. So people play sports because they enjoy it. There's a physicality to it, right? Um, the camaraderie, sense of community. So there's there's a wide range of things. Um, how do people play sport? And you know, something that's always interested to me, interesting to me, is the personality types, like the Myers Briggs personality types, and seeing what kind of sports or activities people play, or or, or avoid, right? According to their personality. So. Um, you know, you look at that and then you look at how they interact with sports. So um, do they get competitive or not? Are they, you know, investing a lot of time, energy, resources or no? And you think about how we really design, market, implement programs to match those needs and motives, right? So you think about uh, youth sports. Um, so our goal there is motor skill development, socialization, uh, extracurricular involvement. Um, so what does that look like? For as far as designing, implementing, and providing that those needs for those needs, you know, what type of sports are we looking at? Where are they going to do it? What kind of rules are we going to put in place? What kind of coaching are we going to do? Um, so you think about that, you know. You're not, so for example, if we're talking about motor skill development, um, socialization, sense of community, maybe we're looking more at team sports, right? If we're looking more at motor skill development, sense of self self-efficacy and stuff like that maybe working at solo sports so um you know the next step of that is looking at what's the purpose of the program and having it very explicitly stated right so this is the like a goal statement so to speak the goal of this program is abc then we can look at the delivery um so who's going to do it where are we going to do it how are we going to do it um all those types of words um whether, whatever it may be, we got to answer all those questions, and then we got to come up with a budget for them. So, you know, and that's part of it too. It's like, you know, we, we could have the greatest program, but if, you know, monetarily it doesn't work out, then what do we need to do? Do we have to go back to the drawing board? And then finally, we look at how do we know we were successful with that uh, activity? So, all right, 